Yeah, what is going on today, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic. We've already done the dual lane bow support and ADC builds. Today, we're going to be doing mid lane builds. We've got six gods. Yes, there might be like one or two other gods that could be fit into this mid lane role. I'm going to do the six most known mid laners, gods you'll see in mid the most. So if I'm missing something, it's okay. Uh, these are the six that I wanted to do because these are the six, in my opinion, also six best. So starting with Anubis, the build is going to look a lot different in Smite 2 than Smite 1. And it starts with this Kronos Pendant, which I think a lot of people are surprised by. But this is kind of ripping off Moswell's build from Smite 1. Moswell had this Kronos Pendant build, and it was basically just... You can kill anyone who's diving you, and then you also have the capabilities to just have a lot of CC. The cooldowns are low, and they're also even lower if you get kills. So, hitting wraps, 8 second cooldown, your 3, 6 second cooldown, and then your 1, also 5 second cooldown. And then if you get a Kronos Pendant tick, it instantly brings them back up. But the reason that I like this build is that you snowball really, really hard in team fights. So say you miss, but then you get a kill here. Well, waste a little bit of time. Your two's back up, and then you can maybe get another kill with the rest of your abilities. And then by that time, your ult is going to be available. And, and don't get it twisted. This is still a ton of damage. The build just relies on a little bit more pulling relics and trying to get the enemy relics down and then punish them for not having relics because your ult is on a 42 second cooldown late game and that's without the Kronos Pennant tick. So it's actually going down to about, what, 37 seconds? And that's with no Deso ticks also. So your build is just a lot more cooldown oriented than it is lifesteal oriented. And the reason that I think it works is that Anubis passive is just lifesteal when he gets lower now. You get up to 24% lifesteal and then you get extra tanky when you get lower also. So you're combining this survivability from your passive along with just really good cooldowns from the rest of your abilities. Typhon's Fang is there to negate anti-heal. Typhon's Fang does its one job, which just makes it so you are healing enough through anti-heal. You can 1v1 almost anyone except crit gods. And then on top of that, you have the pen to kill tanks and you'll just do a whole lot of damage. This build is very strong. The one, I guess it's not really that weird, but... Level one, you walk up to the wave and you won the entire wave. All three of the back minis will be one shot. So what I like to do is I like to auto at least two of them and then one. And then it'll kill all the back ones and then it's one auto and then you can kill these ones. So hopefully that makes sense. Next up, Hakate. Yes, uh, I know some people have pointed out that I say your name wrong. I, 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 think, I think it's Hecate or something like that, but Hakate just sounds good to me. Sorry. But what she does is she's also a little bit of a spamming god. She's more of a sit back, kind of cast from a distance. Um, bide your time, buff your teammates when they're going in, stuff like that. But she's also got like a lot of utility. So just having your abilities up for that utility is really good. The Mez on the one, also the extra damage on the one make her so she's just really interesting in team fights. This build is a very cooldown oriented build also. A lot of gods in Smite 2 right now are cooldown reliant for mages. There's really no one shot god, really. But Hakate, the build starts out with a gem of focus. It's a lot of movement speed and just survivability. She doesn't have a ton of survivability in the kit, but she's also not super easy to dive because she has the ult to kind of get out of jail free. Oh, if you get the teleport off, if you don't, then you have this teleport. You have a lot of movement speed with it. The Divine Rune is, there's a lot of healing in the game. I think Divine is a really good stat stick a lot of times as a second item. And there's not really a great second item to follow up here. Cosmic Horror, I think, is just one of the best items in the game, period, for mid laners. Just a ton of good stats. Intelligence, permanent mana, cooldown rate. All you need is just to go at third item and then you're fine. There's actually some tech where if you go book into Cosmic Horror and then I think you need Conduit, but if you go, so if you go tier one Conduit, you go book and then you go Cosmic Horror. Once your book is stacked, you'll actually be good on your Cosmic Horror passive, which is really cool. That is something you could do also, but I really like Gemma Focus on Hakata because I think she needs the survivability. The last three kind of make a lot of sense. They're the tank killing options. You don't really need a ton of other things to kill squishies. Considering your three just does a boatload of damage and then your two one also just add a lot. Your job also is not really to be the tank killer as Hakate. You're a, like I said, you're a more utility based character. Do you do good damage? Yes. But the CC from your one and then like the damage boost of like your other one is all really, really good. And then your ult is actually a lot of your damage also. A lot of people don't know this, but both ticks of the ult do damage. So if they're in this, just getting the TP off gets you that kill. Next up is Kakulkin. And I said there was a lot of cooldown reliant gods. Even Cuckoo is kind of cooldown reliant. Your one is a low cooldown. Your two is a pretty low cooldown. Your three is a decently low cooldown. But just pushing them down just a little bit more with this Pendulum, with this Cosmic Horror, and then with Deso Passive, it just makes it so they just feel a lot better. Cuckoo's strength comes from just having 
a really easy combo. And it's not even like a combo. It's literally ability auto. Just the damage you get from just one-ing autoing. And this is without a fully stacked book. So that's 1,400 damage just from sneezing and then one-ing. You're two also procs passive. You're three procs passive. So you have a lot of ways to proc at this poly passive. But Book of Thoth is cuckoo guaranteed item. No matter what changes in smite, as long as cuckoo passive stays the same and book passive stays the same, cuckoo's gonna be building book. So just to kind of show you why I think it's so cool, ignore like a hundred of the intelligence because pendulum is, is screwing that a little bit. It's actually giving me, what is this? 140. So it's actually giving me 125, I think more. Yeah, so ignore 125, but with Cuckoo, it's at least interesting because 225 is where this procs. Cuckoo's actually at 325 with just these two items. So I like this Cosmic Horror on Cuckoo earlier because the spot of where you get the book into Cosmic Horror passive is a lot earlier than others. You don't actually have to get it fully stacked. So I really like going Cosmic Horror second on Cuckoo. And then Polly third. Finishing out the build, it's the same three items. I think these three items are just so good together. They give you 30% pen and they all allow you to kill tanks along with Deso allowing you to just have the cooldown resets. Really good overall. Very good build. This is what I'm running on Cuckoo. Next up, Neath. And I know what you're probably thinking going back to the Cuckoo build. Why is Neath still building double items while Cuckoo's not? I think Cuckoo's making good enough use out of not having the double stacked passive. His, his intelligence goes down maybe a tiny bit, but you get that extra item, which Neath scales really well with both Int and Strength. Cuckoo doesn't. Cuckoo only scales with in intelligence. He gets the strength from his auto attacks, which is fine. But how many times are you really auto attacking on Cuckoo through an entire team fight? Most of your damage is coming from the poly. But Neath, I still think is very relevant because Int and Strength. Int, Int, Int and Strength. Her autos are strength and int, and then her weaves are int, and then on this recent patch, they're also adding 20% strength on her broken weave. So she's getting a lot of damage from both strength and int, so I think it makes a lot of sense to still stack both. The Archmages is so when it goes late game, you just have so much one-shot potential with your ultimate. Cosmic Horror third, because you get it very easily off of these two items. Worldstone, you are an ultimate reliant character with Neath. But you also make just good use out of these stats anyway. But you want to just try to get your ult up as often as possible. Rata Tahuti, just extra ton of damage for all your abilities. It's very good. And then Ob Shard last. Just so if you are ulting a tank late game, it's not useless. It's not just CC. It's actually doing a good amount of damage also. 35% pen with Rod and Ob Shard makes you hit very, very hard. And then both Trance and Book of Thoth are giving you that flat penetration. So... Really good combo all around with this build. Next up is the Morgan, and it's another very cooldown reliant character. Pendulum first into Gemma Focus. She's just movement speed reliant also because she has no actual dash or anything in her kit. So you want to just get this extra movement speed from Gem. So when you do look to go invis, you can travel across the map as far as you can. I like Deso on her still because her damage early game is fine. But in like the early and mid game, the only way she's useful is she, she kind of gets like a last hit on a kill and then gets her cooldowns back up to go like invisible again to kind of reset herself. It also gives you a chance to maybe get two transforms off in a, two transforms off in a fight. I like Polly and I would new, normally go Polly second, but I don't think Gemma Focus gives you enough damage or enough intelligence for the Polly passive to really be worth much. So I like delaying it third and I prefer the Deso earlier. Yes, you're not going to get a ton of use out of this penetration from Deso, but I don't think it matters too much. Cosmic Horror, again, it's OP IMO. Rod is to kill your tanks. Soul Reaver is to kill your tanks, but Soul Reaver is also just good against squishies because if you just invis and then two a squishy from across the map, I mean, you're still doing maybe not 15% because that's if you had true damage, but you're still doing 10% of their maximum health or 10% uh, of their current HP on top of just your two's base damage. So if you two them for 400 and then your Reaver also hits for another 150, I mean, that's adding a lot of damage, poking that character down even more. And if it's a tank that you're hitting, it's going to do 400 and then maybe 300 from the Reaver. So I like this to allow her kind of poke to be a nuisance also. Let me start off by saying I am not a very good Zeus player. So this build is not my Zeus build. It is something that Aggro likes to build. He, he is the Zeus freak. So I got to allow him to have his dues. He's saying that you can't play Zeus unless you go Gemma Focus into Mirrodin. He stresses Mirrodin is his most important item and it has to be built second. Pendulum of Ages for cooldown. Gemma Focus just to spam abilities to give you a lot of movement speed around the map. Combining it with the two, it actually makes you very hard to catch. The Mirrodin is very simple. You get your three stacks. You pop your Mirrodin. You three and you three for a double stun. That's the entire point of it. 
Is it good? Yes. I still think Zeus is a little weak, but that is what aggro says you have to do with Zeus. Cosmic Horror, again, another cooldown item that's just very, very good. And then Deso, Reaver Rod to kill the tanks because tanks need to die. That's your job as a mage and a hunter most of the time is you have to kill the tanks. And Zeus actually does that decently well when, he, when they're not killing him first. But yeah, those are the six mage builds that I've been running. Personally, I really, really like the Morrigan right now. I think she is very, very good. And I also think Anubis is a little underrated. At least with my build, he feels very, very good. And then Cuckoo is sleeper, sleeper strong. No, I just said half of them. But those three, I think, are just like a decent amount ahead. I mean, Hakate is really good too. They're all really, really fun. Except I don't think Zeus is that good. And I'm not a fan of Neath, so... Take, take it out you can i know a lot of people like neath but that's just me but there it is i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you guys follow me on my second youtube channel follow me on twitter also join the discord so you can be a part of the community comment down below let me know what, what's a build that i maybe should try on these characters something that you guys have been running that just feels very very good i'm very curious i'm not a mid lane player i've just played a lot of mid lane and these are the builds that i've really enjoyed and i've kind of ripped them from other mid lane players see you guys again next time peace peace peace